Hello and welcome back to Bigfoot Lake. It's nice to have you with us again tonight. If this is your first time here, uh, welcome to Bigfoot Lake. Uh, glad to have you with us and hope you enjoy tonight's story. Our story tonight takes us to an island just off the west coast of British Columbia. This is Vancouver Island and this is quite an amazing encounter. This is an encounter with what appears to be an entire family or group of Bigfoot and this encounter involves a gentleman who according to his words was taken by Bigfoot. So with that being said pull up a stump and get comfortable as we dive into tonight's story. This is this story is known as the story of Mushalat Harry. According to the Indians, there was once a large number of Bigfoot living on Vancouver Island, a large island over 12,000 square miles in area off the west coast of British Columbia. The Indians knew about them and feared them and respected them, but granted that they were harmless. One of the Indians of the Nootka tribe, who lived at Nootka in 1928, claims to have been carried off by them and held captive for some time. The story told by Father Anthony Terhar of Mount Angel Abbey in Oregon is a curious one. Father Anthony, a much-loved missionary priest who traveled the west coast of Vancouver Island for many years, was living at Nootka at the time of the story, and he knew Mushalot Harry very well. Mushalot Harry was a trapper and something of a rarity among his fellow tribesmen. He was, according to Father Anthony, a tough, fearless man of excellent physique. In the course of his trapping, he would spend long weeks in the forest alone, something that the average Indian did not do in those days. The Indians of the coast were apparently a rather timid people, and they seemed to regard the deep forest as the home and territory of the Bigfoot. When they went into the deep inland forest for any reason, they never went alone. Mushalot Harry was different from the other Indians. He went in the forest alone and feared nothing. Late one autumn, Mushalot Harry set off for the woods. With his traps and camping gear, his plan was to set out a trap line and stay in the woods for several months. He headed for his favorite hunting area, the Kanuma River, at the head of Tlupana Inlet. From Nootka, he paddled his own canoe to the mouth of the Kanuma. There, he cached the canoe and headed upstream on foot. Approximately 12 miles upstream, he made his base camp, and after building himself a lean-to, started to put out his trap line. One night, while wrapped in his blankets and clad only in his underwear, he was suddenly picked up by a huge male Bigfoot and carried off into the hills. He was not carried very far, probably a distance of about two or three miles at the most. When daylight came, he was able to see that he was in a sort of camp under a high rock shelf and surrounded by some 20 Bigfoot. They were of all sexes and sizes. For some time they stood around him and stared at him. The males to the front of the curious group, females behind them, and young ones to the rear. Mushalot Harry was frightened at first and his fear grew to terror when he noticed he said the number the large number of bones lying around the campsite. When he saw these, he was convinced 
that the Bigfoot were going to eat him. The Bigfoot did not harm him in any way. Occasionally, one came forward and touched him, as if feeling him, and when they discovered that his skin was loose, it was in fact his woolen underwear, several came forward and pulled at it gently. While they looked at him and examined him, Mushalot Harry sat with his back to the rock wall and did not move. He was cold and hungry, but his thoughts were only an escape. Sometime in the late afternoon, curiosity on the part of the Bigfoot seemed to slacken, and when, with most of the Bigfoot out of camp, probably food gathering, he thought, there came the opportunity that he needed. He leapt to his feet and ran for his life, never looking back. He ran downhill towards where he guessed the river to be, and sure enough, he soon came to his campsite. In one, what must have been blind panic, he bypassed his camp and ran for 12 miles to where his canoe was cached at the mouth of the Kanuma. Father Anthony describes the story of Mushalot Harry's arrival at Nootka as follows. It was probably three in the morning. He and his brother Benedictines were asleep and the village was quiet. Suddenly there was a series of wild cries from the waters of the inlet. Lights were lit and he and others hurried down to the water's edge. There, fear near frozen and exhausted in his canoe, lay Mushalot Harry. He was barefoot and clad only in his wet and torn underwear, and he had paddled his canoe through the winter night 45 miles from the mouth of the Kanuma River. Father Anthony and his companions carried the almost lifeless form up from the water's edge. It took three weeks to nurse Mushalot Harry back to sanity and good health. Father Anthony, who took him into his own care, did the nursing, and that during the course of these three weeks, Mushalot Harry's hair turned to pure white. The story of the kidnapping came out slowly. At first, Mushalot Harry would talk to no one. Then, he told Father Anthony what had happened, and later, others. When he was fully recovered to health, he was asked when he planned to go back and collect his belongings, the camp equipment, his pots and pans, his trap line, and above all, his rifle at the lean-to on the Kanuma. In 1928, a trap line and all of its pieces must have been worth a great deal to an island Indian. A rifle alone would be regarded as a highly prized possession. But Mushalot Harry never went back to the Kanuma. Not only did he never return there, according to Father Anthony, he never left the settlement at Nootka, never went into the woods again for the rest of his life. He preferred to lose all his valuables and probably hard-won possessions rather than risk another encounter with the Bigfoot. Late in 1972, I had occasion to visit Vancouver Island. I was on a routine investigating trip and when I found myself at Nynamo, not too far by road from the west coast in the scene of Mushalot Harry's adventure, I drove there. I stopped in Gold River and obtained from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police some maps and instructions on how to get to the Kanuma River area. Nowadays, there is a logging road that runs all the way down to the mouth of the river. And one Sunday morning, with the logging trucks out of the way, I drove there and made camp on the Kanuma. I spent several days there, walking the riverbed and exploring. 
I tried to make a rough determination of where Mushalot Harry might have had his lean-to, and I found a place that offered a good campsite, 12 miles from the mouth of the river, on the edge of a series of high bluffs. The salmon were running in the Kanuma while I was there, and all night long I could hear them splashing up the shallow waters of the river. In the morning, Black Bear worked the river, getting the salmon that had come ashore in the night or had become tangled in the limbs of fallen trees that lay in the river. I counted six bears in several days. The country was generally wild and deserted, and the actual mouth of the Kanuma, where it flowed into the salt waters of the inlet, was one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen. Some of the forest close to the river had been logged off, but the logging work had moved on west and while I was there it was quiet. The days began with morning mists on the river and then warmed to the clear crispness of perfect autumn weather. Evenings were cool and damp and nights bright with a starlight that provided almost enough light to read. I found no sign of Bigfoot on the Kanuma, nor any sign of Mushalot Harry's trap line or lean-to. I hardly expected to find anything of the latter after forty odd years, but even though Mushalot Harry was long gone, the river and the forest remained unchanged. The splashing salmon, the cold, clear water of the Kanuma, the moss-covered banks, the shallow pools in the forest that the Kanuma drained, that were the breeding places of the salmon, the river birds, the plodding bears, the deep, silent waters of the inlet, all were as they must have been forty years before when Mushalot Harry cached his canoe and made his camp there. So that concludes tonight's encounter, the story of Mushalot Harry. So this encounter is an absolute classic that's been passed down through the years time and time again is this story one that you've heard before um, or is this something new for you I'd, I'd like to get your thoughts on it what do you think about Mushalot Harry's story of being carried off while wrapped up in his sleeping bag by by this Bigfoot carried for a couple miles and then waking up to see this whole family very 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 fascinating encounter now one thing that stands out for me with this story is the fact that these Bigfoot, they never offered any harm to him. It didn't appear that that's not, didn't appear that that's what they wanted. Nothing, they didn't want to physically harm him in any way. They were more curious. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? Do you guys think possibly Mushalot Harry was going to be dinner? Or was it just a curiosity there's varying opinions on these things and I would like to see you guys' comments in, in the comment section I always like to read your comments and if you enjoyed tonight's story hit that thumbs up uh, and if you haven't subscribed to Bigfoot Lake and you enjoyed the story I, I would appreciate it if you could click that subscribe button uh, all we do here is share stories of encounters not only with Bigfoot, it's predominantly Bigfoot, but we also share stories of Dogman and other mysteries that just can't be explained away. These encounters, these personal stories of people's experiences, whether they be passed down from generations in these classic encounters or stories that are sent directly to us of possibly brand new encounters that have never been told before that's what we do here so if you like that sort of thing click that like and subscribe and i hope you guys all enjoyed tonight's story i hope you guys all have a great night and as always we will see you next time at bigfoot lake